Hello, my name is Destiny and I'm a community health promoter. In this video, I'll be talking about how to assess and monitor asthma to keep it under control. The goal of good asthma management or control is to prevent symptoms from happening. Preventing asthma symptoms improves quality of life for people with asthma and their caregivers. It also decreases the chances of long-term damage to the airways. The four most common asthma symptoms are coughing, chest tightness, wheezing, and shortness of breath. When these symptoms occur, a person with asthma is having an asthma episode or an asthma attack. Before symptoms occur, the person may feel early warning signs. For example, before coming down with the flu, you may feel early warning signs such as a runny nose or feeling tired. When you have the flu, you have flu symptoms such as a fever and chills. Asthma also has early warning signs, which normally occur 24 to 48 hours before the start of symptoms. Being able to recognize early warning signs and take action can help prevent asthma episodes. Young children cannot recognize or describe their asthma symptoms as clearly as adults can. So it's important to watch for early warning signs in this age group. Early warning signs for an asthma episode in children may include a chest or tummy ache, a runny nose or rubbing the nose, dark circles under the eyes, an itchy neck, chin or chest, grumpy or grouchy behavior, no energy or getting tired easily, not being able to keep up with friends, cheeks without color, or very red cheeks. People with asthma can live active, normal lives when their asthma is well controlled. It's very important to take asthma control seriously because people can die from asthma. The main risk factors that increase the chance of dying from asthma include a previous severe asthma episode leading to an intensive care unit admission, two or more asthma hospitalizations in the past year, three or more asthma ER visits in the past year, a hospital or ER visit for asthma in the past month, using more than two quick reliever inhalers each month and or difficulty recognizing asthma symptoms. Other risk factors include living in underprivileged communities, having additional health issues, and or using illegal drugs. There are several tools that can help people control their asthma. One very important tool is an asthma action plan. The purpose of the asthma action plan is to help people manage and control asthma symptoms on their own. This is called asthma self-management. A person with asthma should work closely with his or her medical provider to create an asthma action plan that is easy to understand and follow. The medical provider will write and sign the asthma action plan. The plan includes a set of instructions that explain the steps to take when the person is feeling well, when having early warning signs or symptoms, or when having a breathing emergency. The plan will list the correct medication, how to take the medication, and how often to take it. Help to identify asthma symptoms and respond to them early. Provide guidelines for when to contact the doctor. Describe what to do in an asthma emergency. Explain the steps to take to keep symptoms from getting worse. Include a list of the person's asthma triggers. Assess the level of asthma control. And describe the early signs and symptoms of worsening asthma. An asthma action plan is based on asthma symptoms and peak flow values and uses the colors of a traffic light to show how to recognize and manage symptoms. There are three zones, green, yellow, and red. In the green zone, the person is doing well. There is no cough, wheeze, chest tightness, or shortness of breath during the day or at night. The person can do usual activities. 
The peak flow value is 80% or more of the person's best peak flow value. When in the green zone, the person should continue to use long-term controller medications as prescribed by the medical provider. In the yellow zone, the person's asthma is getting worse. The person has at least one of the following symptoms, coughing, wheezing, chest tightness, or shortness of breath, waking at night from asthma symptoms, trouble doing some, but not all, usual activities. The peak flow value is 50 to 79% of the person's best peak flow value. For yellow zone symptoms, the person should follow the treatment plan found in the yellow zone section of the asthma action plan, which includes immediately taking quick relief medication. The red zone. This is a medical alert. The person is very short of breath. Quick reliever medicines have not helped. The person cannot do usual activities. The symptoms are the same or have gotten worse after being in the yellow zone for 24 hours and or the peak flow value is 50% or less of the person's best peak flow value. When in the red zone, the person should continue to take his or her quick reliever and immediately seek medical attention. Having an asthma action plan empowers people with asthma and their caregivers to manage asthma with confidence. In addition to the asthma action plan, there are other tools to assess whether a person's asthma is under control. The Asthma Control Test, or ACT, is a short survey. There are separate asthma control tests for children ages 4 through 11 and people 12 years and older. The survey looks at symptoms over the past four weeks. If the total score is 19 or less, it means their asthma is not well controlled. The Rules of Two is another helpful tool. Answering yes to any of the questions means that a person's asthma is not well controlled. The rules of two questions are, do you have asthma symptoms or take your quick relief inhaler more than two times a week? Do you wake up at night from asthma more than two times a month? Do you refill your quick relief inhaler more than two times a year? There are additional tools to diagnose asthma and measure a person's breathing. The first is spirometry. A spirometry test must be done to diagnose asthma, and at least once a year, a spirometry test should be repeated to monitor and assess a person's asthma. Next is a peak flow meter. A peak flow meter is a handheld device that measures how well air moves out of the lungs. It may tell if a person's airways are getting smaller even before the person recognizes symptoms. It also can make a person aware of the need to take action and treat the beginning stage of an asthma episode. If used every day, a peak flow meter may help to determine if the treatment plan is working well, determine when to seek emergency care, identify when a person's triggers are making asthma symptoms worse. To use a peak flow meter, stand up if possible, or sit up straight on the edge of a chair. Slide the indicator button down as far as it will go to set the meter to zero. Keep your fingers away from the numbers and do not cover the hole in the back. Take a big breath in with your mouth open. Hold your breath with your mouth still open. Close your lips tight around the mouthpiece. Make sure you do not put your tongue in the hole. Blow as hard and fast as you can. Find your number. The indicator button will go up and stop on or in between a line or number. Do not move the indicator button until you write down the number. Repeat the steps two additional times and record the highest of the three readings. It's very important for a person with asthma to have frequent checkups with his or her medical provider and to work as a team to address asthma. During the visit, the person should 
review how well his or her asthma is controlled, discuss whether any changes need to be made to the asthma action plan, and request a spirometry test to check for breathing changes at least once a year. Community health promoters play a valuable role in helping people learn how to better assess and monitor their asthma. We can help people recognize early warning signs of an asthma episode, offer tools to assess asthma control, like the asthma control test or a peak flow meter, and teach how to use an asthma action plan and explain why it is important for managing asthma. Thank you.